why should you listen to me when it comes to septoplasty and sleep? So first of all, I had septoplasty surgery in November last year. In addition to that, I've been on a radical journey to improve both my sleep and other people's sleep over the last four years. So if that's of interest to you, continue watching. In terms of this video, I made this basically for my past self. There's a lot of things I wish I'd known before I went for septoplasty surgery. In addition to that, I'm gonna explore, was it worth it? And I'm also gonna share with you data that I collected during this journey. So I've been measuring my sleep data and other data for quite some years now, and you can actually get a bit of an insight in terms of what the extra difference was to me before and after the surgery. So what actually is septoplasty? So it's a common surgery used for fixing deviated septums, which is basically where the wall in your nose is maybe deviated either left or right or in different ways, which effectively means that you maybe are not able to breathe very well through your nose. In my case, I had one of my nostrils that was closed very easily. At times it's very hard to breathe through and it would even make like a whistling sound. So I had to sort of very heavy nasal breathing. And what I found was I would often have my nose get blocked up and I suspected it was leading me to mouth breathing in my sleep. I have sort of mild sleep apnea and I was quite convinced that this was linked to that. Because basically, if your nose is blocked, then you have to breathe through your mouth. And then if you've got sort of issues with your throat and your sort of airway is closed because of the position of your tongue, for example, it can lead to sleep apnea. So the idea was, if I breathe better from my nose, it can help me during the day, but it can also potentially help my sleep. Now, I'm a bit of an optimist. I've got to be totally honest. I didn't do much research on septoplasty in detail. I can of thought, okay, I'm just gonna to go to surgery, four hours later, I'll be back and I'll be on my laptop and a few days time, I'll be back in the gym and then everything will be fine. Uh, the reality was a little bit different. So for example, this is what I looked like in four hours after the surgery. Anyway, going back a little bit, I went to hospital, I hadn't eaten the day before and kind of, I was on the surgery table, talking to the doctor, talking to the anesthetist and they injected me with like whatever it was needed to put me to sleep and things got a bit dizzy and before I know it, that was it. I was just gone. My next memory was basically being on hospital beds and I was in super, super good mood. So you got some pictures of me above right now. If you look at my eyes, you'll see the iris is super small. So it, basically I was high on painkillers. So I was in a great mood. I was trying to talk to the nurses. And I live in Prague, so I was trying to speak to them in Czech, even though my Czech isn't very good. And I was having a great old jolly, basically. However, as you might know, painkillers wear off. And about an hour later, I was struggling a bit. I was feeling quite nauseous and it actually took some time to get me out of the hospital. Uh, my girlfriend arrived a little bit late to collect me and I was kind of suffering, <laughs> let's put it simple. Uh, but thankfully, got me into a taxi and we got back home and spent most of that rest of the day in bed. As you might have saw from the pictures, I had a thing around my nose, which is basically like a nose bandage, and my nose is stuffed with gauze and with two plastic stints, which won't be visible in any of the pictures. Now, these were quite uncomfortable. So what happens is after surgery, your nose swells up a lot and it's also a lot of pressure from the gauze and it's kind of stopping all the blood from coming out. So you, my nose has got absolutely massive, basically. Uh, maybe I have a big nose normally, but much, much bigger. And it wasn't very comfortable. The first two days were, oh, they, they weren't fun. Uh, I'm just gonna be totally honest with you and that's the whole point of this video. Um, after two to three days, I was able to go to hospital and have the gauze taken out. So it's a lot of the bandages that were inside my nose. Um, that was a little bit unpleasant, but wasn't so bad. It was definitely a relief, like having all this pressure inside your nose removed uh, definitely took away a lot of the pain. However, you still can't breathe through your nose. So you still have these plastic stints, which you can't see, uh, suck up your nose, essentially. So you have to wait at least another five days normally. So these stay in your nose normally seven days until after surgery. Now, I'll be totally honest, these seven days were not fun. I, you can't really sleep very well. Uh, like you'll see the sleep scores right now because you can only breathe through your mouth. So you're basically stuck to mouth breathing the whole time. Your mouth gets all dry. 
there's not many foods you want to eat and I'm going to go into these in the tips section later in this video by the way it's just yeah it was probably one of my least favorite weeks of my life I don't want to say to scare anyone but I just think you have to go in with the right expectations uh, I barely got no work done at all in them seven days I was in bed most of the time I was on painkillers a lot of time and I would ideally not want to have the surgery done again if I could avoid it but keep in mind you haven't heard about the positives yet either now the best thing ever was getting the stints out i'll pull up some videos from other youtubers who showed this actually happening but essentially you just tilt your head back they put some like scissors up your nose they cut a few things and the next thing is pull out this like long piece of plastic and boom you can breathe again it was unbelievable honestly yeah, seven days of not being able to breathe and then suddenly whew, like wow uh, I was so happy just to be like back to uh, life nearly. Now, obviously, your breathing is uh, very delicate. You've had quite a major operation, and in particular, a winter time, which it was for me, it, you're very sensitive. So you probably want to have like a scarf or something uh, just to keep yourself nice and warm around your face. But it was certainly a big relief. Now, was that the end of it? Not really. Uh, the doctor told me I shouldn't exercise for at least six to eight weeks. And I thought, oh, like, you get maybe an opinion of what I'm like. It's like, oh, whatever, I'm sure I should be fine. So I was, I was literally in the gym a few days later, actually. I was like straight back into the gym and trying to work out, which with hindsight probably was a mistake. Uh, they, the doctors all the time said how hard it would be, suggested it's going to be like eight to 12 weeks for recovery. And Funny enough, they were right. Yeah, it was a pretty difficult period of my life overall. However, I will be covering if it was worth it later. Here are 10 things I wish I knew before the surgery. Number one, I just wish I'd accepted I'd be out of action for one or two weeks after surgery. I really thought in my head I was gonna be working straight away, I'd be fine. In my case, it just wasn't true. It really knocked a lot out of me. So just manage your expectations of what you think you're gonna be able to do the weeks after surgery. I would at least put two weeks, if you can, to have recovery. If you need to be into work sooner, don't panic, but I'm just being totally honest about my personal experience. Number two, I really wish I drank a lot more water. So when your nose is blocked, you lose a lot of appetite, drinking's a bit uncomfortable, eating's uncomfortable, but I really wish I just forced myself to drink more water. I was probably not drinking anywhere near enough, which meant I was probably dehydrated the whole time. And that nearly certainly slowed down my recovery and made me feel even worse. So if you're going to get septoplastic surgery, force yourself to just drink a good two, three liters of water every day. Have a straw, take small sips, but just really consciously do it. Number three, I think it's a good idea to have like a light scarf or something to cover your mouth and face, especially during winter. So you get very sensitive. And if you're mouth breathing, it's kind of like, if the air is cold, it dries out a lot quicker. So having some sort of way to kind of gently cover your mouth so the air is a little bit warmer, does make things a lot more comfortable. Number four, if possible, I'm not sure I'd recommend doing it in the heart of winter. As I mentioned, the cold was really tough. I think it would have been a bit easier had I done it in the spring or towards the end of the summer, personally. Number five, Greek yogurt is probably your best friend here. It's kind of got good fats, it's got a good amount of protein, it's quite easy to eat, and so you just put some fruits or protein powder in it. So it's probably one of the more manageable foods to have during surgery. So uh, I'm very grateful for Greek yogurt in this case. Number six, make sure you got someone to help you for the first one or two days. Uh, it is a surgery where you can go home on a day, but that doesn't mean that you're in a good state. So I'm very grateful my girlfriend helped me, but I really recommend just you have somebody to look after you for one or two days at least. Number seven, I really recommend having lots of pillows and having them at an angle. So you can kind of sleep with maybe like a 45 degree angle because you don't really want to be too flat, especially if you've got maybe some slight sleep apnea issues, which is another topic I'll cover in this video. Therefore, just making sure you're at an angle where your airways aren't obstructed does help. Number eight, make sure you really do listen to the doctors in terms of their advice, what they recommend you to do, and also the side effects and how to take the drugs that they give you. Uh, I was given some pretty 
serious painkillers and uh, I probably wasn't as mindful of the instructions that I should have been. And now that I look at the products I had afterwards, they were pretty serious drugs. Like you have to take them at the right times. So just don't underestimate what they give you. Really learn the instructions correctly and yeah, follow the advice of your doctor in short. Number nine, I was given antibiotics, which essentially means that a lot of my gut microbe was totally wrecked uh, the weeks after the surgery. So there's not much you can do about this, I believe. What you can do, however, is get into a good habit of eating well before the surgery. If you're already eating junk food, sugar, processed food, you're not eating it very well, before the surgery, then your gut microbes can be even more trouble if you continue them bad habits afterwards. Uh, you're gonna be in a much better place if you're eating healthily, eating vegetables, eating fermented foods. You're kind of eating things that are more pleasant and better for your gut microbes, so they'll recover a lot faster. And number 10, you're just gonna have loads of weird snot and mucus and stuff in your nose for probably eight to 10 weeks, if it's anything like me. It's just constantly coming out. You're just thinking, where is this stuff coming from? And basically you're just, your nose goes into overdrive after the surgery and it just creates a lot more snot and yeah. It's not the most pleasant thing to talk about, but I'm just warning now, this does happen. So just don't freak out. Uh, it, it was totally normal for me at least. And then after eight, 10, 12 weeks, it was just back to normal. It wasn't bad at all. On the screen right now, you can see the sleep data for my Garmin and my Aura. Now, the area circled in red is basically when I had the surgery. So obviously, it was gonna be terrible sleep because if you can't breathe through your nose at all and you're on painkillers and everything else, it ain't a great recipe for sleep. However, you'll see I bounced back very quickly. And if we zoom out, you see my sleep scores generally did improve. And the biggest change is the consistency. Since having that surgery, six, seven months down the line, my sleep scores are incredibly consistent. And uh, this can all be back to verified. I share my sleep scores every single week on social media if you wanna check them out. In addition to this, I'm gonna share you my stress scores. So basically my stress levels, which are recorded in my Garmin, also appear to have dropped after the surgery. Not by a massive amount, but something that is noticeable given we know when the surgery was. Things that didn't change, I didn't really see any change in my data for breaths per minute. In addition to that, my sort of average resting heart rate is more or less the same as it was before. The big wins for me were three months after the surgery is actually doing new personal bests in the gym. Uh, given I'm 36 now, I'm probably past my prime in terms of this age. That was a big deal for me. So. If it's directly linked to surgery or not, we can't say for sure, but I was feeling pretty good not so long after the surgery. In addition to that, I had a lot less apnea events. So this is basically where my sleep apnea was kicking in and keeping me awake at nighttime. Sleep apnea is basically where you're choking during the night uh, due to obstruction of your airways. Since the surgery, I honestly have nearly not at all woken up in the middle of the night. My sleep scores are very high. My blood oxygen levels have been fantastic. Long story short, it seems to have solved a lot of the sleep apnea issues I was having, because clearly I'm breathing through my nose during the night. I've also lost the whistling sound, so now my breathing is just normal. It's quiet, there's, it's not heavy. Uh, so just during the day, breathing is a lot more enjoyable. Last but not least, since the surgery, I've not had a blocked nose happen at all, and I've not been sick once. This sort of level of consistency in my life hasn't been very common, so uh, if it's all down to surgery or not, we can't know for sure, but you can definitely call me happy. I recommend it. Ultimately, I'm not a medical doctor. This video is not medical advice, and anything I say is just an opinion. What I would suggest is learning more about nasal breathing in general. There are other ways to solve this issue that aren't just septoplastic surgery. So if you want to learn more about that, I recommend listening to a real expert on nasal breathing. And a good example of that is Karen Parker. I did a LinkedIn Live with her. I've got a full 45, 60 minute video of me talking to her and asking specific questions around septoplasty, nasal breathing, and sleep. Overall, if you're interested in productivity, consistency, and sleep, then you may want to subscribe to my channel and you're welcome to book a call with me if you want help on improving your sleep.